let's discuss about how this was even conceived uh, as a project. So there are very different steps required to actually write the rules of the game. So Jonathan, enlighten us with the process. <laughs> um, well, you know, as I said, this was the first one, so I, I learned a lot of things while going. But uh, the very first thing was I had to learn the game. Uh, so, Gonzalo, you and I got together, and we hung yeah. out on uh, a Tabletop Simulator for a while. I can't remember exactly how long, you know, maybe like an hour and a half or something. Yeah, uh, like we, that. You taught me Darwin's Journey, and then we played through, I think, one of the... Uh, the uh, the overall rounds of the game just to kind of get that in my head and I asked you a bunch of questions and I wrote a bunch of notes and um, then I took that and built an outline uh, that was th that seemed like the right way to, to go because the very first thing I had to figure out was how to structure things I mean this was quite the rule book to do for the first time <laughs> uh, Darwin's Journey is a it's a cool game I really like it I've played it like seven or eight times now and I, I'm looking forward to getting my copy. Because I back nice. at the, the collector's edition, uh, but why um, should you? I <laughs> thank. <you. laughs> it looks so shiny. I don't know. I, I really wanted to try Firelands at that point. I mean, now I know everything about Firelands because I wrote those rule books too. But I didn't know it at the time. Uh, but anyway, um, I started with the outline uh, just in Google Docs. Um, you know, just like components list, overview, uh, setup. You know, that kind of thing. And I just started fleshing all of those things out and. Um, Darwin's Journey, if you are not familiar with it, which most people probably are here, um, it's a, a game with over 30 discrete actions, like different things that you can do with their own specific icons, and they're everywhere. <laughs> this game is essentially about do something and then activate a bucket of actions, and they're kind of cross-compatible in a lot of ways. So that was a big challenge. Uh, so what I did was I took all of the actions and I made a list of them and then I just started sorting. Uh, you know, these seem to appear here and where does this action not appear? Like, is this not on any of the crew cards or not on any of the objectives? Okay, well, that's going to help. <laughs> that means it's just something that shows up on, you know, the special actions or something like that. And um, I just, you know, was building out the outline, went over it a few times and then I essentially wrote a uh, non-publishable version of the rules. Um, at that point, you know, I didn't put any fluff. I didn't work on the grammar. I just said, you know, this is what happens. This is what happens. Bang, 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 bang. And then I sent it back to you. And I said, is this how the game plays? <laughs> you know, it was essentially a, a, a rule book in outline form uh, that was uh, not pleasing to read, but it was just trying to to hone in on the, the structure, you know, the framework, the actual game itself. Uh, and you went through and you made a bunch of, I don't remember how many, but you definitely made some changes because you know, I wrote the rules based off of what you taught me and I took notes, but there are some things that I missed and some things that we didn't catch. And we just kind of worked from there. I, you know, it was this um, this skin and bones backbone of the game that taught all of the rules um, in a very uh, uninviting way. And then I just started adding meat on the bones. You know, I just took that outline and I took those, I went, went from the top down and I was like, okay, this chunk is the rules. Now let's write it to really explain it and also try to, you know, get around edge cases and all of those kind of things. Um, so it was uh, a, a layered system, you know, start with the skeleton and then add new stuff in. And every single step of the way, I would say, hey, Gonzalo, you want to give this a check? I mean, I say that I put 58 hours into this. I don't even know how many hours you've put in to reading this over and over <laughs> again. Um, a lot. I'm sure it's been a lot. <laughs> How many pages we reached in the base game? It was like 63 64. or something. 63 or 64. Every time yeah. is okay, gone. I did a bunch of uh, <laughs> fixes to this and I said, okay, let's do something. Since we, uh, we want to understand the entire concept, let's read the entire rules, not just the changes. And every time mm -hmm. it was days, days to read it because it's just every fix, everything. And when, when it was yeah. almost <laughs> done, like we said, okay, now it looks like awesome right then there was the the other part was uh all the style guide and the grammar check yes. and when you yeah, told so me hey definitely... that it's done we joined and it was like a thousand corrections and we were just okay bye <laughs> and gone is gone yeah so <laughs> That was definitely a learning process part of this as well. Um, and actually that's the point where my wife, Jessica, joined in on this team effort. I say that I put 58 hours in, but many of those hours are actually Jessica's hours. I just kind of logged them together as part of this project. Um, Jessica is a uh, grammar uh, 
uh, assassin. <laughs> she's a grammar superhero. I don't know. She just, she's really good at grammar. And um, she offered to help me out with this part of the project. I think I'm pretty good with grammar, but there are definitely some weaknesses that I have. Um, that honestly, I feel like I've gotten a lot better over the last few months just writing these out. Um, so Jessica jumped in. And she didn't know what she was getting into. <laughs> she said, you know, I asked Gonzalo, you know, about this collaboration. And he said, go for it. And then I sent her the files. And she's like, this is 64 pages long. And I was like, oh, that's just the base rule book. Then there's the Firelands expansion and the mini expansions. And and there's a lot. So that was uh, a big scope right there. And yeah, she went through and put in well over a thousand corrections. It was it, honestly, there were some that she just auto accepted because it was just too many. It was too much to see. And the big learning thing there was we should have, well, first of all, let's talk about the style guide. Um, we should have come up with a style guide right at the beginning uh, because throughout this whole process, as I've been writing this, I would frequently walk into the other room. We, we've got, uh, I have a studio in our house and the connecting wall, there's our guest bedroom slash office, where, which is where she's been working for the last year because of pandemic. So there are just countless times I've walked around the wall and I've been like, is this capitalized or, you know, it, it, should I have a comma in this specific spot? And she would say, oh, well, you know, if it's uh, this and that and the other thing, then this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, okay, I, I think I got it. Um, and when we actually started doing this, specifically with capitalization, I asked her, you know, what should be capitalized? And her answer was, well, it's kind of up to you because, you know, technically if we go off of the base, uh, you know, like MLA type of uh, uh, grammar stuff, Almost nothing is supposed to be capitalized, but capitalization can be really important in rule books for board games because it can help define components. It can help define actions. It can help do whatever you want uh, realistically. And um, what she told me is what we needed to make was a style guide where we said, these are the rules that we are going to abide by. So we essentially had to come up with those rules. And so from that point, we had a whole bunch of discussion about, well, what do we think should be capitalized and what don't we think should be capitalized and what should be bolded and then italicized. And um, we ended up building a style guide. I made a separate document. I sent that to Gonzalo. I said, do you like this? And he said, yes. And then the two of us sat down next to each other with our laptops and went through all of these documents implementing that style guide that we made. But unfortunately at this point, we had a 64 page main rule book. We had a 34 page Firelands expansion rule book. We had a 20 plus page expansion uh, uh, rule book for the, uh, all the mini expansions. And it was just a lot of pages. Um, so that took a while. And so the, the big learning thing there was, we should have done this from the start. I mean, honestly, from that moment where I had a skeleton and I started adding meat to the bones, the analogy I talked about before, that was the moment that we should have come up with a style guide and written towards that style guide as the words entered reality instead of writing them and then changing them and then changing them again. So that was just a big uh, learning thing, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, you know, the next time we do this, uh, well, first of all, the style guide is written. Like, I don't think we're really gonna have to change that from one uh, uh, rule book to the next. Uh, it's, it's not Darwin's journey specific. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. It works for our brains and it seems like it worked for you. So that is time and effort that we don't have to put in again. And I will, I will definitely have that open, like on my screen next to the document when I write the next one of these, so that most of those corrections will hopefully not be necessary. Um, so yeah, they, they, lots of, uh, I guess, you know, growing pains with this yeah. uh, overall <laughs> process. Um, yeah, I have to admit it was wonderful working with my wife on this though. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, she was, she has games been in general awesome. is really it, good. <laughs> You're telling me. Uh, <laughs> it was, even when it was hard work and it was daunting, the amount of corrections and stuff that we were doing, we were doing it together. And and I'm used to being solo in this room, you know, recording my videos, editing my videos, learning, doing all this stuff. Um, so it was really cool now having a, an expanding team. Like, honestly, like Gonzalo, you, you felt like a team member, you know, like we were a team building this. We're yes. emailing each other yes. back and forth. You're commenting, we're responding to each other's comments. That alone felt great. And then actually sitting down next to uh, my favorite person and then doing this dream job thing that I'm trying to make happen all at the same time. It was, it was very cool. <laughs> That's so nice. Uh, so nice. So yeah, uh, this. I'm just yeah. like, I'm hyped now. <laughs> I'm, I feel I can do anything. <laughs> Such yes, a great, it's great story. You guys are awesome for getting John Gets Games. No, he's awesome for accepting working with us, which <laughs> has been definitely a pain for sure. So let's talk about that. So uh, what was the most interesting and the most frustrating part of it? And I will add Mora's question over the chat. How was working with Undergriff? 
Um, you I'm can be sincere. With... These people know us very well, so it's fine. <laughs> it's I'll like answer fair. that last question first. I mean, honestly, it's been great. I I've really enjoyed this. Like I said before, I feel like I'm part of a team. Like, I know this is, you know, you know, a client kind of, you know, thing. Like, you know, obviously I'm charging you for my time and all that kind of stuff, but it, it hasn't felt like that. It's felt really collaborative, which has been very much appreciated because of the solitary nature of this job. I mean, the old job that I had before John Gis Games became full-time, it was part-time. I, I did event production for 13 plus years, which is a very collaborative experience. Like lots of people, you know, like two to 35 people all working together to make big events happen. So I'm used to thriving in collaborative environments and then the pandemic comes around and I'm in this room by myself all day, you know, except for lunches and whatnot. So that was, that part was great. But then on top of that, I mean, you all have been just so wonderful. There were definitely some moments where I would send something in and, and the, uh, uh, what am I looking for? The imposter syndrome would really sneak up on me. Like, oh, they're not going to like this. Or, you know, I send a, one of these documents in and it swings back and you uh, and Christina have put in like hundreds of comments of your own, just changing things. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're never going to work with me again. <laughs> they, you know, they like, they, they don't like what I did. They have all these different changes and I go through it. But you know, as time went on, I realized, no, that's, this is just the collaboration. Like th th that wasn't them judging the words that I wrote. That was them suggesting alternates uh, and, and that kind of thing. So uh, honestly, it's been great. And you say you want to keep working with us uh, for writing rule books in the future. I think that's wonderful. Uh, as I mentioned, um, I have been pushing the, the the game development aspect of John Gets Games more over the last, well, I guess year now. It's somehow July. Uh, that's crazy. Um, time flies by so fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, I don't so remember I guess it was about 2019. A year ago. I'm like, 2019, 2020, <laughs> was, it's like, whoosh. Yeah. It went by. So John Gets Games as the, the making videos and all that kind of stuff. Like this, it started on a whim and it turned into a professional thing from my desire to be in the board game industry because I'm, you know, very passionate slash obsessed with board games. Um, but I, I never really expected to go full time, like 40 hours a week making videos the whole way through. Uh, and then the pandemic swung around and said, hey, look, this is what you're doing. And I, I did a lot better with that than I expected. But as the last year went along, I realized that I, I was craving a little bit of variety in my you know, work diet, if that makes sense. And so that's why I started yes. reaching out to some of my clients about proofreading rule books or potentially just doing, you know, actual development, uh, blind play tests, like that kind of stuff for games. I just, you know, threw the net out there to see what would uh, happen. And and uh, I caught you guys <laughs> and a few other people. Um, and, and I'm just overjoyed, honestly, that you are interested in continuing this on as like an ongoing thing, because it's just going to uh, add spice to my life, you know, variety to my career. Uh, and also I've always wanted to be a part of the board game industry. And I feel like being in board game media is a part, but it's also separate. Like it feels like they're, you know, obviously very symbiotic in a lot of ways. Um, hopefully, you know, from an optimistic perspective, they're symbiotic anyway. Um, and, and that's fine, but I've always wanted to kind of, you know, be in both of those camps even more. Uh, you know, I, I tried to be a board game designer back in like 2011 and 12, and I designed a bunch of games because I wanted to be a part of it. And it's just exciting that I finally figured out how I can be a part of making the games better, like being in the in the behind scenes area. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm rambling now, but that's part of the reason I stopped making formalized reviews of games is because I got so frustrated because I would, you know, say, you know, positive, neutral, negative things. And it would be really frustrating to me to, to talk about the issues that I have in a game and know that there's nothing that you can do about it. Just say like, you know, in game X, I feel like this one strategy is too powerful or, you know, the cards run out too quickly or this this thing over here wasn't clear enough or whatever that was. And it was like, you know, closing the barn doors after the, the horses have left. Like the game's made, it's on shelves, you can't change it. So it, that frustration kind of led me to say, you know, I don't think I want to make reviews. I want to I want to do this before the game goes to the printer, you know, <laughs> like I want people to, to pay yeah. me to come up with all these, you know, things and then say, you know, and, and then actually impact those things. Um, so anyway, it's a that huge was a impact. Really long I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a very big responsibility for sure. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then again, it's been an incredible process for us, which is still not over as we are working through the nope. layout right now. And then no, it's uh, he will have to prove and Jesse will have to prove that layout mm -hmm. to be sure we're that everything all again. Is, yes, correct. <laughs> Several times, most probably, but. Probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, uh, can we that back being to said the, the, before, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, John. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes, oh, I was just. I only answered one of the three questions. I tend to ramble. Um, so the, the the most surprising, most frustrating question. Right. Yes. Uh, I'd say that the most surprising thing. Um, well, now I want to say two things, so I'm going to say two things. Uh, the first is how much I've enjoyed this process. I was terrified. Honestly, when I said yes, I was terrified. I, I, I thought it was going to uh, be miserable about it. I mean, honestly, when I've written things in the past, not rule books, but just, you know, in college and all that kind of stuff, like when you write things, I hated it. I always hated that process. It just, it just drove me up the wall. So I expected to dislike this as well, but, you know, you miss all the shots you don't take. So I decided to take it and I was so surprised at how fulfilling it was. Like when I first started like building out that outline, I can't remember how many hours that took many, um, you know, it was probably like a five or six hour day. And, and I think I just like worked right through lunch and suddenly it was like in the evening and I was like, holy cow, that was like the fastest day. And it was just wonderful. Like it was just putting all these building blocks together. And I was like, did not expect that I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting to do this, to realize that yes, I actually hate it, and then to <laughs> to move on from the future and then not worry about it anymore. I was not expecting to be like, I want to keep doing this. Um, so a another big surprise uh, that, that occurred to me just a few seconds ago that I, I, with relates to uh, the game itself is I was surprised at how much I got to name in this game. You know, like when you taught me the game, in Tabletop Simulator, you just like, you take this token over here and you put that over there and that token goes over there. And so when I'm starting to write the rule book, it's just like, none of these things have names. Like none of these components, like is it a research token? Is it a specimen token? Is it a, I don't know, is it is it a tent? Is it a campsite? Is a, I don't know, just, is it a settlement? Like there's just so many things that needed names. And that, that was, that was pretty fascinating. Uh, uh, like it was A, surprising at the kind of impact. Like I remember thinking like, okay, this is what we're gonna go with. And then that's gonna be what it is. And then like thousands of people are gonna call it by that name that yes. I just called and it. And we were just quite okay <laughs> about your names. I mean, I remember reaching yeah, out to you, you and we them. were done <laughs> just because I needed to name a mini expansion then they will go into written. I was saying, hey, John, what do you think we should name this expansion? Which is completely unrelated to rules writing, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, honestly, the uh, like the Falmouth port expansion where you have this like super Explorer and you have the super boat. Um, what are they called? <laughs> I guess I'm gonna call them super explorer and super boat. But like we but Jessica and I actually had some a pretty long conversation, like at least 20 minutes, just discussing what we wanted to name the explorer. Uh and <laughs> the, the reason for that is because I had named it the mounted explorer, and because it was mounted on top of a horse. And we just felt like that that maybe just didn't work <laughs> for, for like you know, going forward. I can't actually remember what we ended up going with. We went with something. It wasn't that. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was just really fascinating uh, from that perspective. Um, yeah. So the most disappointing, uh, no, frustrating, the most frustrating, frustrating part. Yeah. Um, probably. So when Jessica came through and started this process and she started doing the grammar part of the main rule book, um, she started off focusing on the grammar, but Jessica plays a lot of board games as well. So this turned into a blind play test, essentially, because she had never played this game before. Uh, no, sorry, a blind uh, rules read. And she kept catching things that we had just missed, like big things, like large mistakes. And, and, and it was tough for me. Like it, it, when she showed those, like, A, I was really happy, like <laughs> that we got to fix those, but I got really frustrated. Like, how did I write that? Like, those are my words. I wrote that and it's wrong. <laughs> wow. How did that happen? Like, it's so frustrating. It just, I've, I've received so much empathy for other rule books. You know, when you read a rule book and you're like, how could they get this thing wrong? They missed that entire thing. Well, I mean, <clears throat> when we first put the rule book out for the Kickstarters, uh, for the Kickstarter campaign, which was obviously like an alpha level version of the rule book, um, we just completely omitted the part that explains how you, um, uh, 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 how the, uh, wax seals apply to objectives. Just, it just wasn't in there at all. Like if a wax seal, if an objective asked for wax seals, it just wasn't in the rule book. It just, that was just a smack myself in the face moment. Um, there was a moment when she was uh, going through the Firelands expansion rule book and she's like, what is this compass? You keep talking about a compass. And I was like, what do you mean compass? And she's like, it's right there. It says, you know, take the compass token. And I was like, 
that's a stopwatch. That's not a compass. Like, what? Why did I think it was a compass? What, and I wrote compass like 10 times. It just, the frustration of realizing how fallible the human brain can be. Like, you feel like you're smart. You feel like you got it. You feel like you know what's going on. And then you look at a stopwatch and call it a compass numerous times. Uh, <laughs> that's that's frustrating. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to learn from that. And also, I'm also trying to learn to not let that get to me because this is just going to happen. It, you know, things like this happen. This is why you do blind play tests and bl blind rule book uh, uh, reviews. This is why you have multiple people check it uh, over and over again. Uh, because honestly, that's after you and Christina had looked at it. Neither of you mentioned that I wrote compass like four or five times. So we sure. all missed it. And it was just yes, like, yes. wow. That's why uh, <laughs> someone no said earlier, uh, a fresh pair of eyes goes a long yeah. way yeah. because a lot of stuff you wrote it's like you already know in your head so you're like yeah i don't mm -hmm. need to explain this so precisely but someone who hasn't played yeah. a, any game ever it's like i don't know what's going on what is this what's a compass there's no yeah. compass and you were like you already play with <laughs> it and you you assimilate that concept exactly with the piece beforehand <laughs> yeah if there's anything i've learned in this process it's that you can edit something infinitely <laughs> I feel like you could almost you could edit in a circle where you know like the slight rewordings and then somebody come you know a new fresh set of eyes they slightly reword and then this person slightly rewords and it just you could just edit these forever like I feel like <laughs> there you just at a certain point you have to decide that you're done <laughs> and that's I'm sure yeah. really difficult. Uh, where can we contact you for working together? So this brings us to the last question that we have for him yeah and it was how do you envision this part of your job going forward and you can answer also that that other <laughs> question about how yeah, to reach yeah. out to you. yeah um i mean i envision doing this more and by this i just mean general purpose development type stuff like i want to uh, i don't feel like i've reached the the final point of my board gaming career i'm not really sure where it's going to end up going i feel like i've only just opened the doorway to this and i'm there's just so many different options uh you know i i've really enjoyed proofing i've i've done proofreading for probably about eight different rule books for um some other publishers i don't know if i've actually proofed oh no i have proofed a couple of yours so far yeah. um but uh, i've really enjoyed proofing like blind testing because for those I come into it blind and you know, I find all those, you know, it's not a compass, it's a stopwatch kind of uh, moments. It's not a stopwatch either. It's a, it's a, it's, I'm uh, calling pocket it a stopwatch. Watch. Pocket it's a watch. Pocket watch. watch. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, time's a charm. <laughs> right? Um, so now you need a stopwatch mini expansion. Um, so <laughs> um, what was I, what was I just saying? Uh, oh yeah. So as far as doing this stuff in a perfect world, I think I would love to have 50% of my time making videos and 50% of my time doing development of some sort, writing rule books, proofing rule books, uh, doing just, you know, blind testing and all those kind of things just to see where those go because it's fun. It's just nice to have that variety, you know, sitting here and here recording all day long or editing all day long can be a lot. And sometimes I try to vary that up. Like I'll record some and then edit and then record. But sometimes it's nice to be like, ah, oh, here's just a rule book. Somebody wants me to read and tell them what's wrong with it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. This is fresh. This is different. Uh, this is what I'm doing this afternoon. I don't have to, you know, turn the camera on or anything like that. Um, also, I just really enjoy being a part of this stuff. Um, I love board games. It's, it's something I've been passionate about for longer than I've been passionate about anything else in my life. Um, and I feel really fortunate to have bumped into board gaming. And I, I really did uh, kind of um, uh, accidentally bump into board games, you know, uh, 13 years ago, I met somebody at a party that I didn't know, and they had a weekly Catan game, and the, the rest is history. So if I if I hadn't gone to that party where I knew nobody, wow. I wouldn't be sitting here today, wow. which is just ridiculous. Um, and it takes you and I got lost in a tangent again. So yes, so, so so coming back to it, the way I envision the rule books and all that kind of stuff, I just, I want that to be a big part of my career. Uh, maybe not necessarily writing rule books. I'm not against it, and I'm looking forward to writing more. Um, it is very satisfying work. But I don't just want to write rule books. I want to proof other rule books, and I would love to be a part of other phases of development just to see if that's something that I like. Um, there's just a lot of things to try out. Uh, so as far as like uh, contacting me, it's just uh, johngetsgames at gmail.com. Just send me an email. Uh, on, on my website, johngetsgames.com, uh, I have a page dedicated to development. Um, it doesn't say a lot. It mostly just has the email <laughs> on there, but uh, that's another thing that you can uh, you can check out. Well, this has been a lovely chat. We'll be editing this and publishing on our Kickstarter page for Dynamics Journey. Uh, Jonathan, it has been really a pleasure working with you and having yeah. you on this stream. Thank you so much. 
hope it will happen uh, uh, very soon for uh, for what's next. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. Uh, and hope we can meet up it. again at the next UKG, no. the next Essen, or the next Gen Con. Soon enough, when that we will happen. We will yeah, not attend right. conventions this year, <laughs> but eventually next year, maybe we can catch up. Yeah, I'm not going to be going to Essen this year. I, I, I almost did, but decided against it. 2022. Yeah, <laughs> 2022 sounds <laughs> exactly. like a year to restart all this process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, all this right. was a lot of fun. Um, en Enjoy your game of Darwin's Journey. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan. Talk soon. All right. Bye bye. Later, everybody. Bye bye.